Theater presents Marshall Thompson and Peter Lawford. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Tom Summit, starring Marshall Thompson. And now, here is your host, Peter Lawford. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Tom Summit, starring Marshall Thompson as Tom. life of our nation, the years following the War of 1812, a movement began in America when a few intrepid men set out to really discover the prize that had been worth fighting for in two long and bloody wars. This is the story of a young man who was involved in that movement, a young man who made his mark in America because of a promise made to a friend, and because he and God had different ideas about the manner of his keeping it. Everything I've been telling you has been true. The truth with a fork in town. <laughs> what be the name of the man that calls me a liar? Now, easy, old man. I believe every word of it. Well, then you're a fool, boy. I am not a fool. Uh, he's the only one of you smart enough to keep dry powder in his pan. Come on, boy. Let's get away from the smell of these wet eared mice. And good riddance to you. <laughs> Do you believe me? I believe you. It's true. Every word, gospel true. What I told you is nothing to some of the things I could tell. But which way is to the door? I'll turn them out. Oh, this, this way, Frontiers, and this way. And you can stop calling me that. It wrangles me. Well, I'm sorry. I, I don't know your name. It's Gustavus Henshaw. Ooh. Not too steady on my feet. It's a demon rum is what it is. I, a cursed day I took my first drink. When I come in, I had a hundred blue. Now, thanks to rum, I can scarce buy salt and baccy and caps. Let alone powder. We, we better sit a while. Yeah, is this log all right? Yeah. The ground, that log's got ticks and I ain't yet. <laughs> You stuck up for me in there. You're all right. Well, I had to stick up for you, Gus. You had to. Well, I believed you. You always speak out for what you believe? Well, I'm trying. You're all right. You got a name? I'm Thomas Summit. Well, Thomas Summit, you figured you're beating pretty high off in the hog for a while. It's all gone now. It's the rum that did a boy's a rum. <sighs> Look, I, uh, I won't call you Frontiersman, and, and you don't call me boy, all right? That's a fair bargain. Now, uh, will you tell me more about the West, about the things you've seen? Things you might not believe, Tom Summit. Well, try me. Well, you, you heard me talk about the Great Mountain. Now, tell me more about them. Are, are they much past St. Louis? Uh, past St. Louis? You get that far, and you ain't even started out. Yeah, I don't feel so good. Now, if a man wanted to see him, how far would he have to go? Long way. Ooh, that rum must have been a bad lot. Well, how long? How long what? Well, to the Great Mountains. A long way. Past the land of Cherokee, Kansas, Arapaho, Blackfoot country. Two or three months. Hmm. Sleep. That'll fix me. You going back, Gus? Going back. For certain sure I'm going back. 
The man can get wealthy in two seasons, Trapper. You bet your boots I'm going back. You ain't think I'll stretch out right here. Um, Gus? Mm. Will you take me with you? Gus? Mm. Uh, will you let me go with you when you go back? Gus? Well, go away, boy. Well, not till you tell me I can go with you when you go west again. All right, all right, all right. You can go with me. Now leave me be. All right, Gus. Now I'll leave you be. time, Thomas Summit sat watching the sleeping figure of Gustavus Henshaw, wondering how it'd feel to wear the buckskin clothing made grimy by a thousand campfires, how it'll feel to explore the wilderness, face the unknown with no more civilization than you could carry in a sack slung across your back, and no more protection than what was afforded by a long rifle, a skinning knife, and your own wits. After the moon had gone down... Tom Summit took a precaution against being left behind, and then he, too, slept. Here, yeah, you. Wake up. Hmm? Come on. Up to your seat. Morning, Gus. What'd you do with my rifle? I hit it. You hit it? I thought you might forget and go off without me. Oh, I'd have gone off without me, all right. Now, you said you'd take me along. I said that. And I'm holding you to it. Yes. <laughs> How you figure to do that? Uh, you don't want to go without your rifle, do you? I'll find it. You think I can't? Now, look, Gus. Last night you told me you'd take me with you when you went west. Look, I'll pay my own way. All I want is to have you show me a few of the ropes. Where's my rifle? Up on that tree limb. Good enough. I should have seen that. Your tracks are all over the place. And I would have. I was feeling good. Which I ain't. Hey, did I have a good time last night? <laughs> Seemed to be having a good time. Well, that's something anyways. Phew. Two seasons work gone in a week. Is that why you want me to take you west? The money a man can make? No. It ain't worth it. For work for the money, I mean. Every minute you're out there, you can figure some engine brave is looking you over, looking for a way to part you from your hair. You mean scalping? That's what I mean, right enough. It's a big coup for a young buck to get a trapper's scalp. And there's plenty you get some, too. Never heard of area mountain ran down old age. Well, that's part of the reason I said I wanted to go. I I don't figure to die of old age, either. Why? Well, my father and my mother, a brother, too, they, they died of a weakness of the lungs. You know what they say about that? I don't. Well, they say when it starts in a family, it just doesn't stop. And you figure to go that way, too, huh? Maybe. That way, or being killed by Indians, it, it doesn't much matter. That's what you say now. It's, uh, well, it's just that I want to do something before I die. I, I want to see some of the world. Oh, I reckon that's not much to ask. I'll give you a lifetime full of things to see, even if you don't figure to have too much time ahead of you. There's just one condition, Tom. And what's that? Don't ever forget anything I ever tell you about the mountains or the engines. They traveled overland to St. Louis, where they bought their provisions, and then took the paddle boat up the Missouri as far as Franklin, the jumping-off place for those who sought the wilderness, or the sudden wealth that might be had from the beaver, even though it might be risking a much more sudden death from Indians. With a group of fellow trappers, they traveled without incident through the lands of the Kansas and the Pawnee, the Crow and the Snake and the Cherokee. And all along the way, Gus talked and Thomas Summit listened and remembered. I've been watching you. You're still too slow. I thought I was loading fast. Well, not as fast as you Don't can, Don't get me but... wrong, Tom. You come a long way in more ways than one. But you got to learn to load and fire faster or some young buck's going to lift your hair. Gus, I thought I was doing real well. I've been practicing. Sure, I know you have. But don't take my word for it, though. Hey, Luke. Luke Miller, you come over here. Honey. 
Why call him over? He hasn't been watching me. Isn't a man here ain't been watching you. There isn't a man here who hasn't had to go through the same thing, Tom. Why, as slow as Gus says I am? <laughs> well, now how slow would that be? Slow enough to get dead. Oh, now, Gus, nobody's fast enough to keep from getting dead at some time or another. Oh, you know what I mean. How about it, Luke? Well, that's a good question. You see, Tom, most of the Indians you'll be running into had counted quite a coup. Quite an honor to bring back a trapper scout. Well, why is that? Mm, bravery, I guess. To most Indians, an act of bravery is a powerful thing. The Indian's faith almost makes it impossible for him not to scout a trapper if he gets a chance. Now, our religion says we have to stay alive as long as we can. There's only one answer to that. We have to, uh, well, out-Indian the Indians. We've got to learn to fight harder than he does. We've got to be more wary than he is and act faster than he does. And I'm not fast enough to beat him yet. No, not by a long shot. <laughs> but you will be. Well, if that's all you wanted to see me about, I got an argument going over at the other fire. Well, thanks, Luke. Obliged to you. Oh, and Tom, if he gets too cantankerous for you, you come along with me. I could use a good partner. He'll be all right. I sure he will. He sure doesn't talk like the rest of the men. He ain't like the rest of us. Used to be a school teacher, I hear. Mightn't be, though. I never asked him. School teacher? Hmm. That sounds about right. He's got a way of thinking about things. I never thought about the Indians having a religion. You know what I mean? Oh, they got one, all right. Never ran into a tribe that didn't, but... I don't know. Somewhere's along the line, they got it all bent up. Gus? Yeah. Luke Miller, do you suppose he meant what he said about being able to use me for a partner? You figuring to move? <laughs> no. He meant it all right. He wouldn't have said it if he didn't. Yeah, you could do a whole lot worse than to go halves with Luke Miller. Be a smart engine who hangs Luke Miller's scout. What a waste that would be. That ain't likely to happen. You see, he can load and fire in less than half a day. Now, Gus, I promise you, before we get to Taos, I'll be loading and firing with the best of you. I promise. They spent a week at the Spanish settlement of Taos, New Mexico, where they heard that General Ashley of the American Fur Company would hold a rendezvous each spring on the eastern slope of the Rockies. For the first time, it would be possible for trappers to sell their furs without making the long trek to Franklin or St. Louis. The two spent the last of their money for another year's provisions, and then they set out for the beaver country, the far reaches of the upper Colorado, the heart of the Rocky Mountains, and the heart of the Blackfoot country. At the end of the second season, when they were getting ready to leave for the rendezvous, they had a visitor. Try to drink some more of the broth. No. No more. Leave him be. He's been a long time without. Too much lonely, sick and more. Hey, close that flap, will you, Gus? Try to keep some of the heat in here. Yeah, I should have thought of that. Do you think we'll be able to get him to the rendezvous? We have to. We can hide some of the pelts, put them on a pack animal. We'll never get away. Never. You feel like talking now? They caught us cold. No warning, no sign. Blackfoot? About 20 young braves. Almost boys. Who was with you? Jebediah Gallon. Luke Miller. Luke! Because they got Luke Miller. Any chance they got away? No, no, no chance. And there's no chance for us. They'll get us, you know. They followed you here? They've been following me for days. I didn't know you were here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tom, come on. What do we do now? Take the pelts to that cave on the hillside and bring all the pack animals back. We'll need them all for mounts if we're going to stay ahead of that war party. I'll try to get him fit to move. All right? Have we got a chance, Gus? I don't know, Tom. You better get a move on. And, Tom, if you hear firing, don't come back. Till the firing began, Thomas Summit didn't look back. Then it was almost too late. The Indians had come following the tracks of one man. They had found two. And because they were young braves and at war, it was a cause of rejoicing. 
And because of their rejoicing, they made a mistake their tribe would remember. They missed seeing the tracks of Tom Summit. The victory was accomplished, and the victors had ridden off with the spoils before Tom could get back to the camp. Gus! Gus! Gus, where are you? Oh, Gus. Gus. Oh, I'll make them pay for this. This is war. I'll show them war. I swear I'll teach them to make war on us. I swear it, Gus. I swear it. It was at that moment that a legend began. It was at that moment that Tom Summit's personal war against the Blackfoot took its form. He trailed the victors back to their village. By following the advice of Luke Miller, by using his cunning, he out-Indian the tribe long held the most dangerous of the mountain nations. He studied their weaknesses and used them. He baited them into sending scouts out from the village. And then he killed the scouts. He waited for the young braves to ride out in war parties. And then he sniped at them till there was only one to carry back the tale. He crept into the village itself and stole arrows from one clan to fire into the tents of another. And thereby broke the enemy into factions working against each other. He became a legend. Feared and respected among the Blackfoot as a vengeful spirit. Invincible, insatiable, and invisible. Then, after almost two years, to the astonishment of the Blackfoot and the disappointment of the trappers, the war came to an end. What is this place? Why, it is my tent. Your tent? Who? I've seen you before. You are at rendezvous. I am sublet. I used to pay you for your beaver. Oh, you know now, eh? How did I get here? Smith and Luzo found you in the mountains, going this way, that, and burning up with fever. Did they get me? There are no marks on you that the bon Dieu did not put there. They killed Gus Henshaw. Yes, we heard this. We've heard a lot of things since that happened. How long ago was that? It seems... Sometimes it seems like a day, sometimes it... Like a lifetime. Two years, this rendezvous. Yes, two years. I thought it must have been about that long. There, there are no marks on me, you say? None. Oh, I cut here and there, old scars, nothing. It's finally come, then. What is that? The lung fever. All my family died of it. I knew it was coming. Uh, it is not that, Tom Summit. Not that? <laughs> How would you know? When a man gets sick in the mountains, who do you think they bring him to? There is nothing wrong with your lungs. They are as good as mine. Better, probably. And what is wrong with me? I do not know. Perhaps you went too long without good food. Perhaps something bit you. Perhaps the good God just gets tired of seeing you do what you do. You really think that? It was their war, Sir Blood. I didn't start it. And you think you end it by killing all of them. You can't do that, and you know it. The mountains are full of the villages of the Blackfoot. If you want to know what is wrong with you, I think it is just that God was tired of seeing you making your war. So he sends you to me, to a man with good sense. How long have you been working with the trappers? A long time. Don't you know what the Indians do to us when they find us in the mountains? Why, if you knew... Ah, but I do know. I promised Gus. I promised him I'd teach them to make war on us. And you do teach them. But a dead student cannot use what he has learned. What do you mean? The Huron, the Black Hawk, the Delaware, not even the Mohawk make war on us anymore. And do you know why? No, not unless they're all dead. But they are not dead. They make no more war because someone, a, a priest or some other peacemaker, made a vow like yours to teach them that it is wrong. What do you want me to do? You think I should walk into the nearest Blackfoot village and tell them that it's, it's not nice to carve up us poor trappers? You think I should teach them like a schoolmaster with a bunch of children? Why not? They are children, in a way. <sighs> Pure foolishness. But they would listen to you as they would listen to no other. To me? <laughs> you think they'd listen to me? Well, they'd shoot me on sight. 
Maybe save me for one of their special ways of dying. No, they have learned to fear and to respect you. They would listen to you. I'll do my talking with a powder and ball. You came here to die. In two years' time, you have grown stronger, not weaker. You have lived with death, even courted it. But God has not let you die. You must have a very good reason, Tom Summit. You rest now. And you think about what I have said. You talk foolishness. You have a good mind. Do not close it too soon, Tom. Will you at least think about what I have said? Why? Because you might do much good. Because it might be the best way of keeping your promise to Gus Henshaw. I'll... I'll think about it. In the late 1820s, Tom Summit went to live with the Blackfoot. He endured the rituals of initiation, was accepted into the tribe, and shortly thereafter married one of its women. She gave him four children. Hostilities between the whites and the Blackfoot ended in the late 1830s, and the securing of peace was the work of many men. But Thomas Summit's part in it was enough to make him continue as a legend among his new people while he lived and to be remembered as such for many years after. He died of old age around 1870. The date is uncertain. There is no written account of his life. This is Peter Lawford again. Recently, an article appeared in a national magazine about George Bernard Shaw, and it brought a whole new facet of the man's personality to light. It seems that Shaw, a widely professed atheist, corresponded regularly with a nun, and that the subject of this correspondence was nearly always God. All over the world, Shaw claimed to be an atheist. In his letters to the nun, some of the tenderest religious sentiments were expressed, tending to disprove his claim to atheism. It would seem, then, that he did believe in God, but that he kept his religion buried within himself. A lot of people are like Shaw in that respect. They feel that a man's relationship with God is a deeply private and personal thing, and should therefore be kept private and personal. And that's a mistaken notion. The one prayer given us by God himself begins with our Father, not my Father. We all share the fatherhood of God, and our relations with him should be as open as our relations with our earthly parents. That's one of the reasons Family Theater recommends family prayer. When the members of family pray together, they share their faith and make it as much a part of life as eating or breathing, which is as it should be, and they present an excellent example to each other and to their friends. Then, too, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Tom Summit, starring Marshall Thompson. Peter Lawford was your host. Others in our cast were Barney Phillips, Vic Perrin, Howard Culver, and Robert Emlin. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present A Matter of Potential, starring Joan Leslie. Vic Damone will be your host. Join us, won't you?
Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.